give them victory, O God, over every circumstance, over every obstacle that is in their way. Lord, we pray that you would watch over them. Verses 4 says, And I sought the Lord, and He answered me, and delivered me from all my fears. Those who look to Him are radiant in their faces, and shall not be ashamed. The poor man cried to the Lord, and He heard them. He saved him out of his trouble. The angel of the Lord encamps around those that fear Him, and He, and he delivers them. O oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that takes refuge in him. O oh, fear the Lord, O oh, all his saints, for those who fear him will have no lack. Amen. The Bible says, and I sought the Lord. Amen. There's something about seeking after the Lord. And not uh, when, when you seek after the Lord, he answers. And not only will he answer, but he will deliver. So may the Lord not only answer you, but deliver you. And then the Bible says, He begins to cause a brightness to come over your faces. Amen. And then He, then he comes and he, and he says in verse 7, And the angel of the Lord encamps around those. Amen. May the Lord give His angels charge over you. Amen. May the angels of the Lord encamp. That means they build a hedge around your home, surround you. Amen. And delivers you from all fear. Amen. And then the Bible goes on and says, Taste of the Lord and see he is good. Amen. That means only all that God has for you is good. Amen. And then verse 9 says, The fear of the Lord and those that fear him have no lack. Amen. I pray that as we walk in the fear of the Lord, the, the word fear there basically means in reverence of God. That means I, I, I begin to measure everything that I do and I say, Lord, does this please you? Does this, will this bring a blessing to you? Amen. And so when you walk in the fear of the Lord, it's not like someone waiting for a stick. It's, a, it, it's more out of the fact of saying, I know who you are. I know what you deserve. And so therefore I walk in, 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 that, in the way that will best please you. And the Bible says those that walk in the fear of the Lord will have no lack. I declare over your life, there will be no lack. Amen. That there will be the supernatural abundant provisions of God over your life, over your home, over your family. Amen. Because you seek the Lord, because you walk in the fear of the Lord. Amen. Father, we bring your people before you this morning. We pray, O oh God, that you, O oh God, will bless them that you will watch over them, that you, you will give your angels charge concerning them, they will watch their going out and their coming in, that Lord, you will be the Lord that will be the shelter around them, you will be their rock and their fortress, their strong tower. So I pray today that you will just bless your people as they grow in you, let them see the favor, the blessings and the grace of God in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. So welcome. Thank you for joining with us. For those that are in the house, God bless you. For those that are joining us online, we pray that you would join with us even as we worship and lift up the name of the Lord. Amen. God bless. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm excited this morning that church is open. Amen. And we can come together, gather and praise our Heavenly Father because He's the mighty one. He's the only one that can save us and deliver us. Come on, join us right now as we praise our God. Let's sing. Six baby
Now what I want you to do, we're going to sing those two verses again. But I want you to understand this morning that when you lift your voice and shout, every wall, it's like the children of Israel that was standing before Jericho. The instruction was walk around the wall six days and on the seventh day, walk around it seven times. And after you walked around it seven times, you walked around the walls. But now it's time to lift up your voice. And as you begin to shout, believe that every Jericho, every mountain that is before you, will come crashing down. I want you, when you open up your mouth, believe that miracles start to be released from you. That which you are believing. God for, that which you are trusting God for, that miracle, that, 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 that thing that you are trusting God for, that is not, uh, it, it is not able to happen in the natural, but you say this is what a miracle is, it's a supernatural intervention of God in the natural affairs of man, and when God begins to show up, miracles begin to show up, and so you say today, Lord, I believe for everyone that's believing God for a miracle today, open up your mouth. Open up your mouth as you begin to declare the word of the Lord. Open up your mouth as you begin to speak the word of the Lord. Open up your mouth. The miracle is in your mouth. The miracle is in your declaration. You prophesy over your situation. You prophesy over your circumstances. You know what you are trusting God for. And I declare today that the hills will melt like wax and the presence of the Lord, that the power of God will show up in your life in a mighty way, in the name of Jesus. Come on, let's sing that. When I lift up my voice right now, when I lift my voice and shout, every
have the authority in Christ. Come on, you may be seated and this morning, even as we begin to prepare our hearts to partake of the table of the Lord this morning, I want to just reaffirm this to you today. Your victory is in your declaration. Your victory is in your mouth. The life that you want to live, the victories that you want to see, is in your mouth. Speak it. Declare it. When you come and you speak that which the word of the Lord has written concerning you, that says for those that fear the Lord, there will be no lack. Then Lord, there will be no lack in my life. For those that are trusting God over their homes and over their families, that God is going to break through. That in, in, in Psalm 34, the Lord says that I encamp around you. I send angels to encamp around you. As you pray over your house and you pray over your family, that it will be as according to the word that you declare. That we pray this morning that even as you, you join us even at home and you join with us as you partake of the table of the Lord with us, I pray that you will see the same victories even in your life. So we want to just pray over the emblems in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you that you said as often as you eat this bread and drink of this cup, you to remember the Lord's death, the promise that he will come back again. And so today we remember what the word of the Lord says concerning us. We remember the victory that we have because of the victory that you had on the cross. That you triumphed over sin and the grave so that we can have life and have it more abundantly. So we speak over every home and over every family that as they open up their mouth and as they declare because they have the authority in Christ Jesus. That means they have the power. This power that has been given by God. So as they function, let your people function in a new level of authority. In Jesus name. Bless you. We're going to partake of the table together as you receive the emblems, as you at home join with us. In the crushing, in the pressing, you are making new wine. In the soul. for this battle. 
Jesus. They are anointed, O oh God, to face whatever the challenge that is in front of them. And by it, it is the anointing that breaks the yoke of every bondage. And so today, as your people will partake of the emblems, let, the, let a fresh grace, let a fresh anointing come upon their lives. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. You may partake of them. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Amen. Amen. Thanks to worship team. Amen. Truly the Lord is good. Amen. Amen. The Bible says in, in, in Psalm 34, the taste of the Lord and see that he is good. Amen. 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 I pray that, that that will be the testimony also in your life. That when you taste of the Lord you and when, they, when people come and drink of the waters of your life, they will see that you are good. Amen. That means there is a good water that is coming out of your life. Amen. Now, I wanted to share a few thoughts with you this morning. Um, just basically on the rewards of winning. Amen. Now, I know uh, a lot of us right now, and uh, yeah, not only in our country, but all over the world, uh, people are saying, we're just going to just make it. And I'm saying to you, we've got to win. Yeah. Amen? Amen. That means this battle that we're engaging in, we must win. Yeah. We are not just going to get by, and we're not just going to make it, and we're not just going to wait when this battle is over. I, I, I do not know about you, uh, but I'm, I'm, I'm also in this time where I'm saying, Lord, now deliver us. Yes. Mm -hmm. But don't just deliver us from anything, deliver us from masks. Yeah. Yeah. Come on. Amen. Yeah. I don't know about you, but yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm a little wary. I know I'm going to wait, I'm going to yeah. do it, do whatever necessary, but but Lord, deliver us from this situation. Amen. And, and, and in this time, I'm also saying, God, keep that there must not be any more lockdowns. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Uh, let me, hey, I mean, this thing, lockdown, I think Sylvester Stallone had a movie. Yeah. <laughs> lockdown. I don't think it had so many views and episodes like God we have. Yeah. Amen. We have more lockdowns than even. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. So, 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 so maybe the Lord will have to, not maybe. I'm trusting that the Lord will deliver us from that. Amen? And that the church of God won't be closed again. Amen? Yeah. And that we'll be able to meet again normally. Amen? So we're thanking God for that. I believe there's a reward in winning. Amen? And that means whenever someone will win a battle, there was a reward. Now some of you may be watching the Olympics mm -hmm. and uh, we, we got one gold and one silver so far. Uh, Mary, Okay, if you didn't know that, you got one. And, and one person brought both medals. Yeah. Amen. And the people that we thought would bring any medals wiped out early. Amen. So, but we pray that there'll be a little bit more. But the the essence is the people that compete compete to win. Yeah. Amen. But also in our lives there is a reward for winning. Yeah. That means you can't be engaged in a battle continuously. Some stage, the battle must be over. Yes. Amen. Now I know some of us have battles that we continue for years and for lifetime. Yeah. But the but the biggest thing about a battle is that you must event, must eventually come to an end. Yeah. Amen. And the battle must be for a reason. No one gets into a battle for no reason. Yeah. Amen. That means the battle must make you better. And it must show that you have overcome something. Amen. And I'm here to say to you today that the winning uh, and the reward for winning is an indication and a reflection that you have overcome something. Amen. And how many of you have overcome some things already? Amen. Amen. And so if you've overcome some things already, there are still other things to overcome. But I want you to know that you've got to discern the Goliath that is in front of you. Amen. Amen. Now, this is, uh, let's go to 1 Samuel chapter 17. And uh, I want to just read this. I know we all know the account of David and Goliath and, and the whole challenge. But I want to see you to see through the eyes of David how David saw Goliath. Because if you don't see 
your battle or your Goliath like how David saw him, you won't have victory over Goliath. Mm. You will be like the children of Israel, which was over, I think it was over 40 days, that they stood on one side of the camp, being taunted for 40 days, to the point where they became paralyzed mm. by the enemy, by just the size and the voice of the enemy. Yeah. And the reality is that many of us, the longer we spend, Engaging with the enemy, the more paralyzed we become mm. about the enemy. Yeah. How many of you know that uh, that yeah. time is, is is not always a favorable thing, yes. especially when you when you anticipating bad news. Yes. You know, it, 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 you know. Some, sometimes you go to the doctor and the doctor takes your blood and I see what, what what you know you know how's your cholesterol and how's your sugar and how's this and they're doing tests for different things. And what happens in the waiting? The more you wait, the more you conjure up yes. what things is wrong with you. And after a while you get symptoms of things that are not there. Yeah. All of a sudden you're feeling faint. Yeah. All of a sudden you only want to sleep. Mm. All of a sudden, listen, why? You're anticipating it. You know, you know, it was like my father, when we used to do wrong, and he says to you, go take the bath, go in the room and wait for me. And he never used to come quickly. So now you're already feeling, what's going to happen? Amen. So this is the, 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 the biggest challenge here. The biggest challenge is that in, the, in that waiting. So now we, we meet, we meet the David engaging with the, with the other army of Israel and, and some of the members of the army. So verses 23. And as he talked with them, this is David speaking to the other members of the army of Israel. The Philistine of Gath, Goth, uh, Goliath by name, came out of the, of the ranks of the Philistines and spoke the same words as he spoke before. And David heard him. All the men of Israel, when they saw the man, fled from him and they were afraid. And the men of and the men of Israel said, Have you seen this man who has come up? Surely he has come up to defy Israel. And the king will enrich the man who kills him with great riches and will give him his daughter and make his father's house free of in Israel. And David said to the men who stood by him, what shall be done for the man who kills this Philistine and takes away the reproach of Israel? For who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy the armies of the living God? Mm. Amen. Yeah. I, I, I want you to understand this. There are two types of people in this conversation. There are those that were part of the army that for days, have been hearing the taunt of Goliath. Mm -hmm. He would come up, and the Bible says he said the same thing he said before. He didn't say anything new. I want you to understand, the enemy doesn't say anything new. Yeah. He keeps using the strategy that he used before. Yeah. And, and, and it, because he knew the strategy worked, yeah. because for days, yeah. nobody would come. And the Bible says, and, 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 and these men knew what he was doing. And the Bible says when they saw him, they were afraid. I mean, he's not even engaging in a battle with them. Mm. They're on the other side of the mountain. Mm. And they are afraid just by seeing him and by hearing him. I want you to understand, those are the two points that begin to bring instill the greatest fear. The seeing somebody and hearing them. Amen. So when they saw Goliath and they knew his track record and they knew everything about him, you know, the, there's something about knowing your enemy yeah. that either can energize you to engage in the battle yeah. or it can paralyze you yeah. from engaging in the battle. Yeah. Sometimes knowing too much can be a bad thing. How many of you know that sometimes knowing too much is a bad thing? 
much information can sometimes be a bad thing. Because when you've got too much information, you can give me all the sense of reason because you start living in your head. Yeah. And when you start living in your head, you, uh, reason begins to take over and faith leaves. The reality is David is coming into the same battle, hearing the same report that they've been hearing for days, but nobody would stand. Yeah. He's hearing the same thing they were hearing, but he says, who is going to take away the reproach of Israel? That's his response. Mm. He's coming into the battle with a different perspective. Yeah. He's coming into the battle and he says, who is this uncircumcised Philistine? Mm. No one dare raise their voice against Goliath. Mm. Israel up until this point did not respond. This is the challenge today. The church of Jesus Christ yeah. is standing and Goliath is yeah. beginning to yeah. raise his voice. And the church has been paralyzed. Yeah. We're like a deer in headlights and we're looking and we're not moving. We become paralyzed by what is, is happening and we're saying, how can this be? Yeah. And yet, David is coming and saying, Who is this uncircumcised yeah. Philistine? Yeah. Yeah. You've got to come into that place where, where, where holy anger burns within yes. you. When you see the house of God and you see the people of God and our God being defied because he's saying, Who is defying the army of the living God? Mm. He's not looking at them as just mere men. Mm. He's saying, Who is this uncircumcised Philistine? That choose to defy. That means blatantly, openly taunt. Mm. Speak against. He's not speaking against you. Mm. He's speaking against your God. Mm. Yeah. And yet nothing can move these men. Trained men. Trained for battle. They fought other battles before. But today there's something different that Goliath paralyzed him. He didn't paralyze one man. He didn't paralyze just the king Saul. He paralyzed the entire army by opening up his mouth. How many of you know that one man is not stronger than an army? Yeah. Mm -hmm. But here we find sometimes Goliath does that. Mm -hmm. And I pray that in this time that God will begin to raise yeah. men and women within the house of God that will be able to stand against the works of the enemy and see this Goliath that is in front of us. Because surely we are facing a Goliath. Yes. Surely in our day we are facing a Goliath. A Goliath that is not just a, a government and not just a, 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 an economic power or is not just a, a, a sickness that is plaguing the earth. I believe this Goliath is trying to paralyze the church yes. mm. more than paralyze a nation. More than paralyze economies. And we've got to come to that place where we begin to trust God. And, and, and look at what he says. He says, what shall be done? And these men says, the king says, this is the gift he will give. The king will begin to enrich the man who kills Goliath. Give, them, give him his daughter. And then he will make his father's house free of taxes. I mean, that's a blessing in itself. Mm -hmm. Forget everything else. I will take a tax-free life. <laughs> Imagine not paying taxes anymore. What a blessing. Not only you, whole house. Ah, may the David's arise. Yeah. Amen. We, we, you would have thought that this would have been incentive enough yeah. for somebody to gather up courage yeah. to Come say, on. hey, there's a chance. Yeah. Yeah. There's an opportunity. I'm, I'm saying they are captains of thousands mm. in the army of Saul. Yeah. They are great men, valiant soldiers. But they, the, 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 the reward was not incentive enough for them to engage in a battle. Because I want you to understand, the spoils belong to the one that is prepared to engage. Mm. The Bible says you can, when you bind the strong man, then you're able to take his goods. Yeah. The reality is some of us are unable to come into our possession, that which God has prophetically ordained for our lives, because we haven't been able to bind the strong man. Mm -hmm. We haven't come to the place 
where we can take responsibility over the strong man. Amen. So this is the important po point that David comes in, but he's hearing the conversation through a different lens, through a different ear sound. There's a different sound in his ears. When, when he says, who's this uncircumcised Philistine? He, 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 he sees the, uh, Goliath come out. He hears Goliath come out, uh, beginning to speak what he speaks. And he comes in and he says, who is this uncircumcised Philistine? What made David respond differently? There is a generation of people that responds differently to the taunts of the enemy. And why do they respond differently? Firstly, he's killed the lion. Yeah. Yeah. he's killed the bear yeah. but the third thing that you have to remember he is anointed for this yes. yeah. Amen. remember when Samuel came to his house mm. and Samuel poured oil on his head he says you're going to be the next king of Israel so no Goliath is going to take him out yeah. because he's going to be the next king of, of Israel. Yeah. Yeah. If you know what your prophetic mandate yeah. is, yeah. you're not afraid of the Goliath in front yeah. of you yeah. because it has not been fulfilled as yet. Yeah. The prophetic word that he will be the king of Israel. And the word of God says that none of the words that Samuel spoke fell to the ground. Yeah. And so if I believe the word of the Lord, the word of the Lord will begin to energize you to stand before the Goliath that is in front of you and say, not am I just able to be, have victory over a lion and the bear. I'm anointed for you. Yes. I'm anointed for this battle. Come on. Somebody got to say it in their spirit. I'm anointed for this battle. This is not going to take me out. This is not going to stop me. Amen. But this is going to be my stepping stone. Yes. This is going to become the platform. That is going to set me up to become king over Israel. It's going to set you up this. Your Goliath is your platform. Amen. Yes. For your elevation. For God to begin to move you to the next level. Amen. You see the, the winnings was becoming a byproduct. The reward was a byproduct. Because there is a greater prophetic mandate that is over their lives. I want you to understand. Every one of us, if you're going to come into your prophetic promise, there's a Goliath that you have to face. And you can't face it through the strength of your mother, your father, or somebody else, your spouse, or your loved one. can't face it through that. You've got to face it alone. When you're facing Goliath, you've got to stand alone. When, when David chooses to fight Goliath, it, it, nobody else comes and joins him. The people don't say, we got your back. Even King Saul gives him the armor, but doesn't tell him, I got your back. Mm -hmm. He sends him into battle alone. Mm -hmm. He goes into, into to battle carrying basically what he had. And now this is a very important part for us to understand. When you get into the battle, you've got to be able to stand alone. There are some battles you're going to face on your own. For many people that, uh, that contracted COVID and had to listen. You have to learn how to fight and battle that alone. Mm -hmm. You may have had other family members engaging with it, but everybody had their own battle. Yeah. And you've got to understand with the isolation and all of those things, you've got to battle these things on your own. And I'm saying to you today, the Goliath that is in front of you is the stage that God has set up for your victory. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know what made him the best king of Israel? Because he took Goliath. Mm. Every other enemy that faced him after that, faced yeah. David after yeah. that, knew that he took out Goliath. one of the greatest warriors of his day. Yeah. So when they looked at him, I mean, if you go into a boxing match uh, with, 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 with Mayweather, mm. Mayweather's track record says of all the good boxers yeah. that he took down, and so when, 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 when somebody looks at Mayweather, they don't just look at him as Mayweather, yeah. but they look at him as the, uh, as the others that he has conquered. Yeah. Yeah. Now being under his belt, so they, when they're fighting him, they're not only fighting him, they're fighting him that has defeated Pacwa. Mm. They're fighting him that has defeated even uh, uh, a martial artist, eh? mm. the, 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 the UFC fighter, right? He, 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 he fought other people that were even not in the same genre of fighting. 
but he showed himself strong. Yeah. Yeah. What does it say? Your track record is going to tell your enemies that you're going to face after Goliath yes. who you are. Yeah. 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 The Bible says so much so that the enemies of David became his friends. His enemies became fearful of him because of the battle. And when, when, and when you won one battle, you see, this is what happens. When you win, win the main fight, every fight after that becomes easier. Yeah. Yeah. Because you have conquered the main thing that stands between you and your destiny. Yeah. Between you and your prophetic man. I do not know what the Goliath in your life is. Your Goliath may be different from the Goliath I have to fight. But all of us have a Goliath to deal with. Yeah. And if you don't deal with it, the Goliath will always stand before you and paralyze you and taunt you mm -hmm. and keep you away from your victory. But I want you to understand, God is saying to you, not only am I giving you victory over this battle, I'm going to reward you for winning. Yeah. Amen. And not only that reward is not only going to be a blessing to you, but it's going to be a blessing to your household. Your entire household will be free from taxes. Amen. He, he, he comes in. He, he gives him three things. He says, the first thing the warrior that, that, uh, that defeats Goliath will get great riches. Amen. That means God has, has placed a way. The Bible says in, in Deuteronomy 18, 8, 18, it says, and the Lord gives us the power to get wealth. Amen. So God was setting him up. Some of us, some of us are going to come into our own victory as we overcome the Goliath that's in front of us. And that God is going to set up that stage for you. I want you to understand you cannot come into your prophetic promise thinking that everything will be smooth sailing and there's no obstacles that is in front of you. And some of us see obstacles as the enemy trying to fight us. But sometimes the obstacle that is in front of you is what God wants you to overcome. And that obstacle was planned for your own deliverance. Mm. Amen. Yeah. For your own release. Yeah. For your own breakthrough. Mm. But if you don't deal with it, it will constantly stand over your head. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. But I want you to understand this. This is very important. So we got to get to that place where we overcome the obstacle in front of us. And then secondly, it says he will give the hand of his daughter to them. Uh, in marriage, that was, a, that was a blessing for him. And then he comes in and it says, and the victor will have all the bills paid in for Come on. Mm. Part of your own victory, your own financial break, lies in you overcoming your Goliath. Yes. Amen. Now, how do you overcome the Goliath? David wasn't given much resources. President Roosevelt said this. He says, do what you can with what you have yeah. where you are. The challenge with us is that we want everything mm. to fight the battle. Mm. Even things we're not used to. Yeah. But the reality is all that you have been going through thus far has prepared you for the battle that you're going to Amen. Amen. Now you've got to trust that all that you've been through thus far has prepared you for this battle. Mm -hmm. That means the Bible says, the word of God says, God will not test you more than you can bear. Mm -hmm. why, does, why, why does he know that? Because he's already prepared you for the test that is coming in front of you. Mm -hmm. Amen. And in that test, he's going to bring, bring you to a victory. But, he's, but the statement is, do what you can with what you have where you are. Some of us are trying to move locations when there becomes an obstacle in front of us. We want to go around it. We want to, we want to go past it. We want to use whatever detour we can to avoid it. But Goliath will show up again. You've got to understand, you can try to, uh, you can try to avoid the situation, but it's not going to win. The biggest thing is go through it. The thing with Goliath is you have to go through it. You can't avoid it. You have to almost go with it head on. But you've got to understand in your spirit. You see what, what happened in, in David when he heard the voice of Goliath. It sounded wrong in his ears. And it ignited a holy anger on the inside of him. There's some things if you hear it, 
it must not just make you just uh, accept it. Yes. Yes. It must get you to the place where there, there's a burning desire that God mm. give me the strength to just vanquish yes. this enemy. It's not the thing that you're saying you're going to accept. There's sometimes I would hear a conversation and it would just pass me by. Even a negative word, it can be a negative opinion of someone, it can just pass me by. But there's sometimes when people open up their mouth yeah. and all of a sudden in the inside of me, yeah. I say I bind this devil in the name of Jesus. Because in me, I know this is not yeah. just a natural thing. Yeah. It may be a person saying it. I'm not binding the person. Yeah. I'm binding the spirit behind that, that which is being released because I'm not accepting it. Yeah. Amen. There's sometimes there are things that we've accepted, but inside our spirits, our spirits didn't gel with, yeah. with the word that came in, the sound of our yelling, with the statement that came out of the mouth, even or sometimes of our loved ones. Annie will tell you, sometimes some things are said in my house, and I said, not in the, in the name of Jesus, I bind us. Because I don't accept it. I reject it in, the, in, in that moment. You've got to sometimes get uh, get, get strong yeah. about rejecting certain things in the spirit. And sometimes you have to do things in the natural to say that we are binding this thing. Yeah. I want you to understand, it's good to have a reward at the end. But if you can't enjoy the reward up until you engage in the battle. Yeah. And if you want to engage in the battle, the first thing you need to do is show up for the battle. Yeah. Amen. I want you to know is don't get afraid. Show up for the battle. Some of you know what I'm talking about. When you were in school and the guys called you out. You didn't hide. You showed up. Yeah. <laughs> if there's a battle that is in front of you, you have to show up. You can't win the battle by not showing up. Some of us get spiritual sometimes. Joseph had was blessed mm. that the Lord says the battle is the Lord's, the victory is ours. Other times, Joshua had to show up. Mm. Gideon had to show up. Yeah. Yes, God showed up on their behalf, yeah. but they had to show up. Yeah. Some, of, some, some of the things, you're not going to fight the battle alone. Yes, you're anointed for the battle, but God is saying, I'm with you. Yeah. As I fought with you for the life, as I fought with you for the bear. Remember, he's a shepherd fighting a, a lion in the, in, the, in, in, the, in the environment of the lion. And God gave him the victory. You see, what was, what, what was the difference about, uh, about David? He was used to fighting the enemy in, in its own territory. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. Get used to fighting the enemy yeah. in its own territory. Amen. You don't want to get, uh, you, you said, no, no, we have to be on, 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 on equal ground or we have to be on, in mutual territory. No, no, no. He wasn't worried about mutual territory. He was prepared to fight him on his own, on his own field. Amen. And what does he do? He cuts off the head. After he kills Goliath, he cuts his head off. Saying, now there's a new headship. I want you to understand, if you want to really take out your enemy, you have to cut off the head. That means that there's no way it will come back. But one of the things you you, you watch, some of you would watch uh, movies like 300 mm -hmm. and, and, and and all of those movies. And one of the things when when when, a, uh, when when one army overtakes a new king, they will cut off his head. And the reason they did it was as a picture and as a point that there's a, now a new head mm -hmm. over this nation, over this people. Amen. The one thing that David did, he says, I'm going to cut off your head, feed your carcass to the birds of the field. Amen. Why? Why? He says, because you're an uncircumcised Philistine and you chose to defy the people of God. The thing that has been taunting you, the thing that has been breaking you down, may the Lord give you victory over it in the name of Jesus. The thing, the people that have been raising their voice against you, may the Lord give you victory over that circumstances. Amen. We, 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 we don't want to break people down, but we want to begin to not be broken down. The problem with many of us is that we're so, we're so distraught, we're so traumatized by life, 
We've got nothing else to offer. I pray that the church of Jesus Christ will become triumphant as God has determined us to be. Let's just bow our heads together in the mighty name of Jesus. We give you praise, Lord. We give you glory. We give you honor for you are worthy to be praised. I'm going to ask Cheryl to offer a word of prayer for us today. God, we thank you for this time. Father, where we set aside, O oh God, to honor you and bless you. And God, today we thank you for such a powerful word that has come forth, God. For you have truly made us more than overcomers, Lord Jesus. We thank you, Father, that you have empowered us, O oh God, with the word of God. And Father, we can stand victorious in your name. Father, even as we face the Goliaths in our lives, O oh God, we pray, Father, that you would give us the strength and the power, O oh God, and all the authority, Lord Jesus, to be victorious, O oh God, and Father, to know, Lord Jesus, that we can do it all through you. And Father, we're so grateful for that. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for this time, O oh God, that we sit under your ministry and your word, O oh God. And Father, it brings, O oh God, such revelation to us, O oh God, and it empowers us this day. Be with your people, O oh God, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.